the former chief of the National Security Agency, General Michael Hayden, warning that a recent malware attack on the U Ukrainian power grid is another troubling sign that the U.S. electric supply is vulnerable to hackers. The December 23rd attack in Ukraine led to blackouts for hours before power was restored there. Hayden says the incident foreshadows cyber threats we face here in the U.S., possibly from states like Russia and North Korea. Joining us now to talk about some of the po uh, possibilities, Michael Balboni, former Homeland Security Advisor for New York State, and Robert Lee, a former U.S. Air Force Cyber Warfare Operations Officer and CEO of Dragos Security, LLC. His team obtained a sample of the malware found in the affected network in Ukraine. So, Robert, let's start with you. How sophisticated was this attack? In terms of the malware uncovered, it actually doesn't look too sophisticated in what you would expect to find. What the sophistication was and what actually makes it an advanced attack was the coordination and the logistics behind the attack. Those strikes against multiple facilities over time that ended up leading to the blackouts. So this is, this is an attack, Michael, that essentially knocked large sections of Ukraine into darkness and, and it went on for obviously a long time in the you know, cold, one of the coldest months of the year. Ukraine is not the most sophisticated of countries, but the warning from Michael Hayden is that that same kind of thing could happen in the U.S. Well, this, John, this may have answered three questions that have been out there for a while. First is, can you use a cyber system to manipulate mechanical operations? Secondly, how vulnerable is the U.S. power grid to that type of an attack? And third, is there really a threat from state sponsors? You know, in 2007, we saw the Russian attack against Estonia, obviously the Stuxnet versus the Iranian facility. So what does that all mean for U.S. power producers, and how prepared are they in terms of their cybersecurity? Robert, a lot of people um, might not be aware how, you know, how much of the grid, how much of the U.S. electrical grid is dependent on computer operation. I mean, it's, it's way more complicated than just, you know, burning some coal or, or firing up a nuclear generator <laughs> and connecting it to some power lines. Absolutely. It's a very complex system, and that's where some of the concern is. It's a highly automated system. Now, in Ukraine, after the attack, they switched to manual operations to restore part of their power grid. So the question instantly comes up, is this possible in the U.S.? Can we see this type of attack? And, and the answer is absolutely yes. The difficulty for me is that while we've been making great strides in the electric community, and they've been doing great work to make the grid much more secure, if an attack occurred on the U.S. grid and it impacted more than one region, our ability to switch to those manual operations to restore power and come back from that would actually be much more difficult than what we observed in the Ukraine. By all accounts, they should be lauded for their efforts, and it was something that we need to be looking at. Are you convinced, uh, sticking with you for the moment, Robert, are you convinced that the Russian government had a hand in this? That's one of the accusations out there. It is one of the accusations. I believe it's a little bit early in the analysis, but uh, on the Sands Institute team, when we were looking at this, when we saw the malware and, and evaluated the control systems, the, the big piece to me isn't the malware itself. It's if, if you look at the actual in, the industrial control systems, those physical systems running and operating it, that's how you can identify that there was a coordinated attack. And uh, it is very concerning what we saw. The, the links to Russia are building. It may be a Russian-based team. It may be the Russian government itself. That's still evolving. Regardless, though, there is some level of culpability there. Uh, if there's a team operating within the Russian borders that actually is attributed to this attack, well, Russia probably needs to do something about that. And there should be some international consequences for attacking civilian infrastructure. Michael, very quickly, talk about the warning here. Can the U.S. Um, use this to get prepared? It has to be the, the really, we've been talking about this for so many years, what is the preparedness, but not only in terms of the individual operating systems, but also their vendors. You know, after you take a look at all the other attacks, Target, being, there's so many ways to get in, to use the zero-day exploit of software. And so it's not really if, it's when, and so what are they doing to make sure that they can go perhaps to the manual system like they did in Ukraine and My mitigate the attack? Michael Balboni and Robert Lee, scary stuff. Thank you both.